Welcome back. In this video, we will examine the motion of an object, thrown in the air, with gravity serving as the only force, acting on the object. That does not mean, that no other forces are operating on the object. But, we disregard those forces, because they are insignificant, in comparison to the gravitational force. When you throw a ball up, it will go in a straight line. Whether the ball is climbing, or descending, the downward force given to it is constant. The ball accelerates downward, as a result of this force. This is a steady acceleration, directed towards the Earth's center. The magnitude of acceleration is, 9.8 meters per second per second. We can, however, approximate it to 10 meters per second per second. Let's draw a velocity time graph, when the ball is thrown up at a velocity of, u meter per second. The graph shows, the movement of the ball. This ball will decelerate, by 10 meters per second per second, until its velocity reaches zero. At this point, the velocity of the ball is zero. The ball will start to descend, at an initial velocity of zero meter per second. The gradient of the graph will not change, since the acceleration of the ball is constant in its path. We may use, these kinematic equations to calculate suvit values. We can use this equation, to find the displacement of the ball, at any given time. This is a second order equation. That means, for any given value of displacement, you get two values for time. Let's draw a displacement time chart, and plot a line at any displacement. This line, crosses the graph, at two different points in time. These points in time, correlate to the displacement of the ball, as it rises and falls. The displacement is shown on the screen, by the area under the curve, in the velocity time graph. We can use this kinematic equation, to calculate the maximum displacement. When the velocity is zero, the ball will reach its maximum displacement. In the displacement time graph, this is given at time t of m. In the velocity time graph, the area under the curve gives the maximum displacement. Let's summarize, what we have discussed so far. When a ball is thrown upward, at a velocity of u, meter per second, gravity causes it to decelerate, at a rate of 10 meters per second per second. We can use this kinematic equation, to calculate the time corresponding to a given displacement. When you substitute the values, you obtain this equation, you can solve this quadratic equation, to determine the values for time, when the ball is ascending and descending. These two instances in time, correspond to the provided displacement. We can find the maximum displacement, using this kinematic equation. The ball will reach its maximum distance, when its velocity is zero. After substituting the given values, we can calculate the maximum displacement. Next, we can use this equation, to calculate the time, it takes to reach the maximum displacement. Both the maximum displacement, and the time to reach the maximum displacement, are shown on the screen. Now, let's examine how an object moves, when it is being propelled at an angle. When thrown at an angle to the Earth's surface, the ball follows a curved path, as shown on the screen. This is due to the uniform acceleration towards the center of the Earth, and the velocity component provided to the object, parallel to the Earth's surface. As before, we will disregard any additional forces, and proceed under the assumption, that the object is only subject to the gravitational force. We will refer to the direction parallel to the Earth's surface, as X, and the direction opposite the gravitational acceleration, as Y. We'll assume the object is traveling in the xy plane. That is, the object's whole trajectory is on a single vertical plane. Let's look at the motion of a ball, projected at a velocity of u, meter per second, and at an angle theta, to the x-axis. By splitting up the motion in these two directions, we can make the analysis of the object's motion simpler. The motion of the object in the x-direction, 
is then independent of the motion of the object in the y direction. We can use these kinematic equations independently, for motion in either direction. Finally, we can obtain the true vector, by taking the superposition of the two decomposed vectors. Let's calculate the velocity and displacement of the ball, when the time is equal to t of n. We can use this equation, to find the velocity at time t of n. The acceleration along the x-axis is zero. Therefore, the velocity component along the x-axis, does not change with time. You get this expression, when you apply the equation in the y direction. These are the two velocity components, in the x and y directions, at time t of n. The actual velocity is the superposition of the two velocities, in the x and y directions. Let's find out the displacement of the ball at time t of n. We will use this kinematic equation, to calculate the displacement of the ball. First, let's calculate the displacement in the x direction. The acceleration in the x direction is zero. We get this expression for displacement in the x direction, when you plug the values into the equation. Let's follow the same approach in the other direction. The gravitational acceleration in the y direction is negative. We get this expression for the displacement in the y direction. The actual displacement, is the superposition of the two displacement vectors, in the x and y directions. Which is given by this equation. At this point, the ball will reach its maximum height. The ball cannot proceed any further upward, because the velocity component in the y direction is zero. However, the velocity component in the x direction, remains constant. This equation can be used to compute the maximum height of the ball. When we substitute the initial values, and acceleration due to gravity, we get an expression for the maximum height. This equation can be used to calculate the time required to reach the maximum height. Finally, you get this expression for the time it takes to reach the maximum height. The ball has arrived at the end of its flight path. This is the maximum displacement of the ball in the x direction. There is, however, no displacement in the y direction. The ball keeps the same velocity in the x direction even now. Let's use this kinematic equation to figure out how long it took to get here. Remember, the displacement in the y direction is zero. When we solve this expression, we get two values for time. Time equals zero is discarded because it corresponds to the ball's initial position. The second number represents the amount of time needed to complete the motion. We will use the same kinematic equation, to determine the displacement in the x direction. Please keep in mind that the acceleration in this direction is zero. We can use these numbers, along with the previously calculated time, to determine the displacement in the x direction. We may simplify the solution even further, to obtain this formula for displacement in the x direction. Let's summarize what we have discussed so far. An object's motion follows a bilaterally symmetrical parabolic trajectory, when projected at an angle. The object's initial velocity is decomposed into two components in the x and y directions. This is done to make the motion computation easier. The only force acting on the object is gravity, and it is directed in the direction of the y-axis. No force is acting in the x-direction. As a result, the initial velocity component on the x-axis, remains constant throughout the motion of the object. The object will reach its maximum height, when its vertical velocity is zero. In this part, I've covered everything you need to know. I'll do some exercises in this section in my next video. Please subscribe to this channel, that will encourage me to make more and more videos on this subject. If you found this lesson useful, please leave a comment below. Please don't forget to press the bell icon, before you move out of this channel. Let's meet again with another video. Bye.